Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your October 1st, 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new readings, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I am using, they are all listed in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. All right, so let's move the bowl. I'm going to let it sing while I move your Queen of the Moon and your Moonology cards over to the side. These will be layered on top of the tarot at the end to really give Luna a voice of her own, to really let the moon speak for herself and to see how the moon correlates with what the tarot is saying. How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. All right. Fantastic. So on the left hand side, this is our inner selves. The right hand side is our public arena, our public selves. In the middle, this is our heart. So we have here our inner selves, our emotional, our heart selves, and the public arena. So let's see what the tarot has to say for this time. So we're starting off with the two of swords. A decision is to be made. There is a decision being made, but there's also avenues opening up for you that you hadn't thought of before or that you hadn't seen before. You start having this faith within yourself. Then you have the Page of Cups. This is water sign energy. This is, of course, you coming through. There is a sense of an anointing of power coming. There is a sense of stepping into your own, gaining a greater understanding, knowing a more profound truth, being a student of what you desire. And as that comes forward, you have the lovers. This is Gemini energy, a time frame of May 21st to June 20th. This is a duality of self and of soul. This is love guiding you. This is something more coming, coming forward into your life. And then we have the Nine of Cups, a radiant beauty that is a part of you that others are able to see so much more easily than you are. But as you embrace, kind of there's 
there's these two roads, there's these two ways of being. And as you embrace this kind of melding together of what you really desire and what you really want, you see this blessing come in. And I do apologize if you have good ears and you can hear my nephew. He is um, expressing himself quite loudly right now. We have the nine of wands, fire sign energy. This full moon is in Aries. So this full moon is going to be bring out your warrior spirit, which is what this moon is all about. This moon is about, you know, being that warrior. It is about stepping into your power. It is about beginnings. And it is having that energy as the warrior to begin. So that's really igniting your heart. You will see here during this time, it's like, I know where I stand. I know what I stand for. I know my truth. I know my fire. I know my determination. I am going for. And it makes a warrior out of even the meekest of us, the ones who sit there and say, oh, I'm not a warrior. This makes you a warrior. Maybe not, you know, in the way that you would imagine, but in the tenacity of your soul, in the passion of your spirit, you most definitely are. Then you have the King of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius coming in. The new moon is in Libra, so that has a very strong pull for you. Around this time, you are going to be anointing yourself. You are going to be taking this crown, putting it on your head, and saying, what is it that I stand for? What is it that I want? What truth is the most important to me? It leads you to the devil, all right? As you open up your heart to what you love, you're going to see what has been holding you back. The doubts, the fears, the angers, the upsets, the disappointments. The devil is looking, yeah, the devil is looking at you. It's what spirit is saying. And as you look right back, you're going to see all, all the addictions that we accumulate in this world. And you can see them also as habits. You know, you, you have your, you know, forthright addictions, you know, alcohol, drugs, alcohol, drugs, and gambling are the three, three ones that are really seen as addictions. And then you can have, you know, the ones that there are groups for shopping and eating and, you know, everything else and, and sex and everything else. But here it is anything that is keeping you from truly embracing the quality of your life, truly opening up the doors and letting your spirit shine forward, letting you move forward. And this is going to be something here, Pisces, that you, you can't stand anymore because you're looking at this duality, this place that you want to be, this power that you, you want within your life. Here you're crowned by the number two. Here you're rooted by the number two. And it's the passion to move forward. It is the beauty that is a part of you. It is the understanding of a greater purpose, a greater desire, a greater way forward. And it leads you here. How to the Ten of Cups in the public arena. The Ten of Cups is, it has to be my favorite card, I think in the whole entire tarot at times, yeah. Because it's, and they all live happily ever after. And there's no, yeah, there's no magic to it. It's just a sense of, of sitting there and knowing your heart's truth. And maybe that is magic in and of itself. You know, there is no, yeah, Spirit is saying there is no deeper mystery. It is simply embracing the passion and the power of your heart. But I'm sitting there and thinking, Spirit, you know, that's, that's quite a mystery in and of itself. And then it moves us. Oh, wow. You have the repeat of the number 10. So in the public arena, you are finishing a cycle. And then you have the 10 of pentacles. So you have the really good 10s. So that's awesome. So you have, and they all live happily ever after. And you have prosperity that lasts for generations. It's your hard work is paying off. Oh my gosh. And then you have the king of wands. So you are a defender of the heart. And you are the ruler of your passion, of your soul. This full moon in Aries hits you and it hits you profoundly. You're putting that crown upon your head. And with this full moon in Aries, it says a fiery climax approaches. It is a determination. It is a, you know, intensity of self and of soul. It is a charging forward. The the full moon in Aries. Aries is the first sign in the zodiac, right? So this is our starting part, point. And this sign for you is going to be your starting point. This is going to be where you sit, step back, and you look at beginnings. You look at change and you say, what is it that I want? And in this time of a fear and stagnation and anger and upset and being overwhelmed, you are rekindling the spark within you that makes things happen. You are calling forward your power, your, your source energy, and you are going to see that you surrender to the divine. You surrender to this divine, this divine energy of beginnings, of understandings, of passion, of power, of beauty. And this is where your power lies from, yeah, and stems from during this time. You're going to see this especially if you're born on the cusp with Aries, all right? Yeah, 
you are going to see this power moving you forward. You're going to see yourself kind of a bit really engaged with this energy. For all of you Pisces, you are going to be engaged with this energy, which can have people sit there and say, saying things like, oh, why are you getting angry? Or, you know, why are you so passionate about this? Because you have a calmer, more kind of soothing way about you. But this is the passion. This is the determination coming forward. And it's like, no, I'm not going to step back. No, I'm not going to just kind of be passive. I am going after what I want. And I'm going after what is most important to me. And I am restoring and rekindling my vitality within my life. And as you do so, you are going to have a tendency to be bold and impulsive and completely energetic. And that's going to be awesome. It really is. But watch the impulsiveness because with the Aries full moon, okay, we can have a tendency to be quite impulsive during this time. It's going to make us sit there and say, you know what, just act, just go for it. You can see it here with the warrior spirit of the heart. It's like, I have to go after what I love. The king spirit of of the of the king of wands right here rooting you in the public arena you're you're going to kind of balance out it's like oh wait i have responsibilities i have things that need to be done but this warrior spirit is going to be like charge forward now as you are just make sure that you're thinking things through just make sure it's not thinking things through to the point that you talk yourself out of it it's thinking things through so that you move forward in passion in power in brilliance and in truth and as you do so you're still active but you're not yeah, you're kind of just not running at it, like tilting at windmills, all right, type of thing. And then you're also going to have a tendency here. And this moon does it because it's like, okay, I'm just going to go and I'm going to conquer. I'm going to conquer. I'm going to move forward and nothing is going to stop me. So you're going to look at the thing that is causing you the most stress. And you're going to say that, that is what I'm going after. And so here, just make sure that you don't do, do that. Tongue tied. You don't do that too often or you don't sit there and bite off too much because you're going to have that tendency here at Pisces to say I'm going to bite off you know the scariest thing I possibly can I'm going to do that I'm going to conquer it and I'm not going to be afraid of it anymore and you're going to be very hard on yourself if you don't get it all done kind of yesterday type of deal so be patient and be kind to you you then have the full moon the new moon in Libra and the new moon in Libra says a new romantic cycle begins and so as this new romantic cycle comes forward, it can very well be a falling in love. You know, you can very well have this new romantic energy come forward. You meet somebody, it's amazing, and that would be lovely. And I don't want to negate that for anybody. But the way that I'm really seeing this new romantic cycle for yourself in your life is that you're, you're claiming your throne. You have two kings here. So that is highly important to you. You are looking at what you love. You are looking at what's important to you. You're ending cycles when it comes to your prosperity, when it comes to what you desire, and you are beginning. This is a moon, and this is a time of beginnings. And with this new moon, and new moons bring contemplation, new moons bring serenity, understanding, a deeper sense of, of quiet, and a deeper sense of what do I truly desire? You're going to start a new romantic cycle. You're going to be falling in love with your life again. And that... That is absolutely needed. You know, even if you're sitting there and saying, well, Dane, I love my life. You know, things are really great. You can always fall more in love with it. It's kind of like having a partner, right? You can always fall more in love with your partner. That's always great. So here, as you're balancing the scales, you're balancing you. You're seeing what you desire. And there's a way of moving forward during this time where you think, well, it can only be one of two ways. And you're going to be kind of set on that. But it's not. It's not only one of two ways. There is a beauty. There is an understanding. There is a passion. There is a power that is opening. And you're going to see roads open up. And you have the two of cups here pouring over your head. I just am so drawn to that. Because as you are a student, you are also embracing love. And that's with the lover's card right here. You are also embrace embracing love. You're looking at the hurts, the pains, the negativity, the disappointment, the anger, the upset. And you're seeing that your hard work has paid off as you become the king of your existence, as you take that throne and you know it. Mind, you know, yeah, mind and, and fire and passion. You know it. And then it leads you to the full moon in Taurus. And the full moon in Taurus is on the 31st of October. It is a blue moon, so it is beautifully powerful. It is connected to Shemwin and you know Halloween, so it has that beautiful energy to it. And the blue moon in Taurus says, 
your dreams need a practical plan. And that is what you've been doing. So I love how these moons play off each other. So as you have the full moon in, in Aries come forward and you're looking at your passion and what you desire and then you have the full moon in Taurus come forward and I know it seems like it's, it's quite a long way away but it'll be here before you know it as, as time seems to be going lately and it's, it's saying here your dreams need that practical plan your dreams need that passion, that beauty, that beginning that you are setting up and now it is seeing your worth and your power and it is seeing that yes you can Instead of it always being, no, I can't, no, I can't, no, I can't, it's yes, I can. And it can be the smallest, littlest step. We always think it has to be something grand. It's like all of a sudden, I've conquered everything. I've, I've done exactly what I needed to do. Now I can sit back, you know, and just, and just be. It's like, okay, well, that's cool. But that's not usually how it works for everybody. It's the hard work. It's the looking at the little things. It's seeing what we desire and what we want. And it's slowly and steadily moving forward. And it's setting goals and it's conquering them. And during this time, you have the crow spirit and you have the dove spirit coming forward. October, these are the spirit animals of October. And when I first looked at these, I was like, how incongruous to have the crow and the dove together because a flock of crows is called a murder of crows. And the dove is the harbinger of peace, right? Of peace and of beauty. And it says here, be peace. And so when I look at the dove and I see the message and you see it so clearly where it's like, be peace. This is the messages of peace and of hope coming into our world and coming into our lives, especially when our hearts are hurting, especially when we've been scared or angry or, you know, uncertain, which, I mean, come on, does that not describe these times so perfectly? It's bringing gentle compassion and it's releasing the negativity that has held you in pain and that has held you back. And remember, the thing that I look at with doves is we have doves here where I live and you go outside and you go for a walk and you see them. They are not white, beautiful doves. They are gray doves. And I think they're called turtle doves because they have, yeah. And they, they are beautiful, but it's not going to be all of a sudden the same message that the white dove brings. But the dove is a dove. So know that when you see one, no matter if it looks like a pigeon or it doesn't, it's still telling you to be peace. And it's telling you that something beautiful can be in something that seems rather unremarkable. And then we have the crow spirit. And the crow spirit, I love crows, all right? Yes, they are, they are scary at times because they are seen as scavenger birds. They're also astoundingly smart. And they are astoundingly beautiful. And they have this complex language and knowledge, excuse me, that we are just beginning to understand or just beginning to kind of skim the surface of. And so here it says co-create with spirit. You're going to take something that looks rather like you know it all. You know that it feels like there's nothing beautiful there. There's nothing remarkable. And you're going to start to see that it changes. You're going to start to see that during this time, what you think you had figured out, you don't. And as you're embracing your passion, your power, your beauty, this crow spirit brings in change. It grounds you to your sacred law, to the law that is you, that you you hold yourself to. It then leads you to trusting. It leads you to trusting yourself. It leads you to trusting your intuition. It leads you to trusting your integrity of being. And it has you speak your truth. Because if you do not speak your truth, who will? And how will you? This is trusting your voice. And as you trust your voice, you transform. And as you transform, the crow brings you messages of where you are supposed to be and how you are supposed to move forward. And you're going to see from this dichotomy right here of the crow and of the dove, it very much symbolizes the dichotomy of the two of swords. It's kind of like you see two roads and you're not thrilled with either of them. It's just like, oh, okay, I can walk down this road. I can walk down that road. Fine, fine. And what you're going to see is that there are other options that start to come. There's beauty that starts to build around you. There is passion that starts to become a part of you. And so A and B starts to become more. And as it becomes more, you see more, you understand more. And then pathways open up that you might not even have thought of, but that become a part of you. And as they become a part of you, you have the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is healing beautiful love. 
The Page of Cups is being a student of your heart, your soul, and yourself. The Page of Cups is you. And during this time, what's so cool is that you have this Page of Cups representing you, but you have the king and the king, okay? You have the kings of the mind and of your passion, and yet you still are a student. You never want to stop being a student. It's kind of like when you stop learning, that is, is when things get sticky, right? And so here, with you being a student of your inner self, with you being anointed by love, by passion, by beauty, by understanding, by truth, by tears, by upsets, by disappointments, and you're being cleansed, okay? And you are standing your ground and you're knowing what you desire and you're knowing where you need to be. And it might not be where you need to be. You might be figuring out where you don't want to be at all. Because sometimes it's just easier. I always say, and I always joke, we figure out what we're not. We don't figure out who we are, you know, right away. And I think that's really true. And it can be absolutely frustrating because you see people walking and they're like, oh, I'm this. And they seem so contented. But usually when you scratch the surface, they're not. They just have resigned themselves that these are the two paths that they can walk. And they're going to be contented no matter what. And so then you have the page of cups coming in. And this is being a student of what you love. This is going deeply within your emotions. This is looking at things openly and honestly for yourself. And as you do so here, Pisces, you are looking at you openly and honestly. You are seeing things much more profound, much more brilliant, and with much more clarity than you had before. You're going to realize things about yourself during this time. It's as this warrior spirit comes forward, and it's like, what will I fight for? And what will I let pass? Where do I stand? And what do I let go of? Because here with the page of, of cups, you're looking at this openly and honestly and saying, what is it that I need and want for my life? What am I studying within my heart, within my soul, within myself? And it leads you to the lovers. Now, this is Gemini energy. This is duality of spirit. This is complexity. This can be falling in love. I mean, you have a new romantic cycle beginning. So falling in love is not that, that far a leap. But this is also falling in love with your life and yourself. This is the duality of your own spirit. This is saying, okay, you know, I want this road, but I also want this road. How do I make it work together? This is also saying that you might have a lot of interests during this time. You can think of a Gemini and people usually do see Geminis as kind of, kind of like butterflies. They flit from plant to plant, right? But you can also see them as bumblebees. They collect the nectar from each plant and they are working hard, though it might not seem like it. And that's why people think butterflies. So here with this energy, you're actually doing a lot of work. You're connecting, you're gathering, you're gaining an understanding, you're building something beautiful. And as you're grounding yourself with it, people might not see you working towards a bigger goal, but you are. Embrace your duality. Embrace your greater understanding. Know your purpose. Know, and when spirit is saying here, know your purpose. And I, I am feeling like a frustration around that. It's like, well, if I knew my purpose, you know, I wouldn't be here. If I knew my purpose, everything would be so much easier. And sometimes that isn't true. Okay, actually, a lot of times that isn't true. Because our purpose on this world and in this world may not be something that everybody else looks at and says, wow, that's cool. So here, with the, with the lover's card coming in, it is following what you love. And it's looking at your life, and it's stepping back, and it's saying, what do I love about this? What do I love about my life, my soul, my passion, myself, my beauty, my understanding? Because as you look at that, let me just move this moon for you. There you go. <laughs> You have the Nine of Cups, and that's it. It's like the hidden moon, oh my gosh. So you're represented by the moon in the major arcana, you are. So when you have the moon coming in, and when you have this power of this moon coming in, there's a part of you that comes to life that is often hidden. And that is why I, I just stopped and I looked at the moon and I was like, wait a minute. I almost felt like it had moved on me. And with the Nine of Cups here, there is a beauty, there is a radiance that is coming to the surface. And you're going to be seeing that for yourself and with yourself. There is a beauty and there is a radiance that is coming to the surface, that is guiding you forward, that is letting you see something more. 
And you're not going to see it as a gift. You're going to think, well, you know, it's about time. Whereas really, this is a gift that other people see about you. This is a brilliance, a radiance, a beauty, a truth that people are very drawn to about you during this time. They might not know exactly why, but there is a way that you are moving forward that is very different than the way other people move forward. And it brings in what you love. It calls in a greater understanding. It calls in this truth and it places you in a place of a power within yourself. It doesn't have to be that you become an authority figure within wherever, whatever you are doing or wherever you are. It is that you become an authority simply on you, Pisces. And as you step forward, your heart becomes a warrior of what you desire, what you want, and what you need. It's the passion, it's the fire, it's the brilliance, it's the truth that really leads you towards something more. And as you are ignited, and as you are determined, and as you are absolutely driven, okay, you are going after what you need. You are going after what you want. You are going after where you stand. And as you do this, you are finding a certainty within yourself. It's kind of like a stable ground that you have felt you lost. A stable ground that you might have felt like you sacrificed for others. And now, and you never got that repayment. Or they're like, well, you should be grateful. And it's like, okay, cool. You know, thanks. But it's like, how do I word this? You're done bluntly is apparently how I word this. Oh, well, how spirit words this. You do it. You do it without giving a damn. And it doesn't mean that you're mean or you're cruel or anything like that. It's like, it is time for me to claim my life, my power, my destiny, my truth, my fire, my understanding. And this is a time where you start thinking me first. Not in that petulant child way, okay? Or not in a bratty teenager way. But it is in the way that you say, I deserve to move forward first. I deserve to have this power, this grace, and this beauty as a part of me. I deserve to live in some semblance of happiness. It can be a path to happiness. It can be a road, you know, laid for you for this brilliance, this truth, and this power. But I deserve it. And I will embrace it. And I am moving towards something so much more. And then that's where you become the king of your voice. You have very strong Gemini energy in this reading. So if you have Gemini within your chart, it's going to come out very strongly here. But this is also connecting you with the new moon on the 16th of October. You have here the king. And the king is claiming your power, putting that crown upon your head, taking up that sword and saying, I am the warrior king. Because for me, the king of swords, the queen of swords, they are the warrior king and queen. And you have the warrior moon. So this warrior energy is really calling to you. It doesn't mean that you have to be gruff and, you know, crass or anything like that. It means that you are a warrior for your truth, for your mind, and for what you desire. This is a time where you take up arms towards what your heart truly wants. And you do so with such a charisma of character, with such a understanding and brilliance and kindness of truth that it's actually breathtaking. And as you claim this, you start to speak your truth. And that's part of this moon. Okay? You start, you start to speak your truth and also the crow spirit coming in. You speak your truth. You know your power. You know what it is that you want. And it doesn't mean that you know the full extent of your power, but you start to see the worth within you. And as you see the worth within you, you see the power of your mind. Because the swords are the mind. And the mind is a tricky, tricky place, right? It can also be a very harsh place. And you start to see your mind, your passion, your desire, your truth. You start to see what you want from life and where you want to be. You start to see more than you had ever anticipated. And you start to be open and honest with yourself. What do you want? What do you need? Where do you need to be for you? And how do you get there? Which, that's always the kicker, right? It's like, okay, I want to be this, but how do I get there? Do not look at things and see the path that everybody else has walked and say, well, that's the path I should walk. Because I see you here, Pisces, taking a very different role than other people take, very different path than other people take. 
And with the devil, the Capricorn energy, December 22nd to January 19th, you are going to see that you are cutting ties. You are cutting ties with what has made you feel overwhelmed, negative, angry, defeated. You're cutting ties with what society says, okay, this is the way you are absolutely supposed to be. And you're sitting there and saying, well, why? You know, that's not me and I can't be that. And as you cut these ties and as you embrace your truth and as you embrace your passion and as you move forward to where you stand and what you want, you start to sit there and say, I'm letting go of the negativity. I'm letting go of the anger. I'm letting go of the addictions. And the addictions can manifest themselves in a myriad of ways. They can be rather straightforward, alcohol, gambling, drugs. Okay. They can also be in shopping. They can be in, you know, swallowing your words so that everybody else can be happy but you. It can be in, in eating, finding solace within food because it has these great memories around it and this great comfort. And there are all these things that we do. And it can't even be, you know, just wanting to escape a little bit. You know, just kind of going into your own world and being rather apathetic to the world around you. Rather, you know, rather like, well, why does it matter? And you're going to see here that it matters so much. It matters so much to you how you move forward and what you stand for and what you desire and what you need. And it moves you to the two of wands. And as you have the repeat of the number two come in, there's a creativity around you, right? There's this power, there's this brilliance, there's this truth to you. There's this working in tandem. Now it's your energy working in tandem with the moon. It is, you know, creative energy around you that you're, you're really embracing and, and building off of. It can be people around you who are helping you to stay focused or inspiration that's coming to you that's helping you to stay focused. And the world doesn't seem so terribly big. It is big with the way that you can accomplish things. It's big with the way that you can move forward. But it doesn't seem so terrifyingly huge. It doesn't seem so unencompassingly, you know, fast. Like, you just can't do it. Because there was, there was a fear of not being able to do it, not being able to move forward. And I know people sit there and say, oh, Dane, don't say negative things, but you, you have to give you both to be able to see. And so here, it's like, it's not that vast, scary world anymore. It's kind of carving out your little niche. And everybody carves out their little niche, sees what they want from life, and says, that is where I'm going to stand. That is, that is who I am. And it is surprising, the niches that people can carve out. There's tenacity, there's dedication, yes. But there's also this brilliance of being simply you. And as you embrace this, and as the world becomes a powerhouse for you, in the public arena, something moves you towards your happily ever after. Something moves you towards this beauty and this contentment and this peace and this understanding. It's like, yeah, I can go forward. I can, I can get there. It can even be that you see the, the Ten of Cups of instead of being that unobtainable dream, it could start to be an obtainable dream. It can start to be a beautiful truth. And it moves you forward in passion, in brilliance, in beauty of mind, in a sense of, of the worry being lifted. And it doesn't mean that your Ten of Wands, your Ten of Wands, your Ten of Cups has to be like everybody else. But there is a reason why the Ten of Wands just came up. Because it's the burdens that you put on your shoulders that is not letting you look up and see the brilliance of the rainbow before you, of the sky around you. It's kind of like taking off the, the weight of the world, taking off the anger, the frustration, the feeling like I have to fix it or, you know, I have to be able to. And it's embracing the brilliance and the beauty that is you, that moves you forward, your uniqueness, your love, your compassion of soul, your power. And that becomes a wealth that lasts for generations. That becomes something where you sit there and you're like, oh, wow. That can be your generational wealth, all right? And it doesn't mean that you have to have kids or anything like that. It can simply mean that you spread this knowledge to others, this sense of a contentment and a quietness within yourself, this sense of this is who I am and this is who I need to be, a sense of worth, the sense of you know, quiet adoration for 
for the reason you were born and for the person that you are. And that brings you wealth. Now, yes, it can bring you financial wealth, most definitely. It can take time to build it, most definitely. But it brings this sense of wealth, this sense of power, this sense of prosperity. This is either wealth or something you value as much as money. And as much as I would love it to be always like this windfall comes in, that would be awesome. But not always does it work that way. Sometimes it is these greater lessons that we learn that shape us, that forge us, that have us seeing things, and then have us seeing what's truly important and spreading that knowledge to the world around us, spreading that knowledge to those, not even to the world around us, to the people who simply come into contact with our lives because we have this uplifting energy. Don't, don't knock that. That is a beautiful thing. All your hard work hasn't been wasted. It hasn't been. It's been a hard and long road. At times you have doubted who you are and where you're heading and what you desire and where you want to be. It has made you angry. It has made you upset. It has taken away a sense of worth at times and it has been harder than you have ever imagined. But it is also you moving forward and knowing that this hard work does pay off. It's knowing that you are seen and that you are working towards goals that are truly astounding. And as you do so, you embrace yourself and your soul. You embrace walking through that archway. You embrace a new romantic cycle of beginnings. And as you do so, you claim your throne. You put the crown upon your head and you embrace your passion. You embrace your desire. You embrace what you need from life and from your life. And as you do so, you are focused, you are determined, you are dedicated, and you are. And you are you. And that is the most important thing. So instead of looking at the world and saying, oh, I want to be like this person or like that person, you're looking at things and saying, this is me. This is where I need to be. This is what I need for my life, my soul, and myself. I stand in my truth. And it might be a hard road, yes, but it's my road. This is the reason for getting out of bed in the morning. This is the passion that this moon has, the fire that this moon obtains. And this is what's igniting you and moving you forward. This is that spark coming, that reason for being surrounding you. This is beauty and this is grace and this is bounty. And this is you being the king of your existence, the ruler of this moon, the harnesser of this power. I don't know if harnesser is a word, but we're going with it. Let's see what the moon has to say. How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Angels ooh, and spirit guides. How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the October 1st, 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides. Fantastic. So we have here self-reflection, growth, and sovereignty. Resistance. It's time to release negativity. Have faith in your dreams. Oh, I love it. Adjustments are required. Prosperity lies ahead. Very strong connection to the Taurus moon on the 31st. You and your loved ones are safe. So I love the story that the moon is telling you here. So it's self-reflection, right? We have the roads that are opening up. We have you being a student of what you desire and what you want. You are reflecting. You are reflecting on your soul, yourself, where you want to be, and what you need from your life. You are reflecting on your truth. And it's like, okay, and you can see you past you, present you, the hopes for future you, and your reflection, you're reflecting on what you truly want to grow. And then you have growth coming forward, a growth in love, a growth in what your heart 
desires, a growth in the duality of yourself. You are growing and you embrace a sovereignty. You have the queen of the moon coming forward. You have the sovereignty of self and you have a very kingly energy to you in the, in the tarot. So the king and the queen are coming together. There's a power, there's a grace, there's a brilliance, there's a truth. And we have here the resistance, a resistance to being smothered, a resistance to not claiming your warrior energy. It's kind of like you are resisting being small. It doesn't mean that you have to be larger than life or become the Hulk or anything like that. It is resisting, you know, not, not being your dreams. And it's knowing within your mind the truth that you want and the power that you have. And it's saying, okay, things may not work exactly the way that I had envisioned them, but they are working and they are guiding me forward to something so much more. That is where the resistance comes in. The beauty is still growing. And as the resistance comes, it's time to release the negativity. You've held onto it long enough. It has defined you for too long. It's a new chapter. It's a new time. It's a new you. And as you embrace this, you have faith in your dreams. You have faith in what you want from life. You have faith in the way that you need to move forward. You have faith in the world opening up and you being able to hold that world in your hand because in the Rider Waite Smith deck, that's exactly what you do. You hold that world in your hand, okay? Adjustments are required. For the beauty and the prosperity and the bounty and the ending of cycles and the beginning of hopes and dreams, adjustments are required. You might need to kind of rein things in a little bit and say, well, what do I really want? Are you trying to do too much? Is there a fear that needs to be conquered? Is there a power that needs to be looked at? See it. Understand it. Because prosperity lies ahead. Your hard work pays off. Prosperity lies ahead. It hasn't all been for nothing. And as prosperity lies ahead and you claim this throne of fire, of passion, of beauty, of truth, and you claim your passion, your fire, your beauty, your truth, your determination, your dedication, you know that you and your loved ones are safe. You're heading on the right path. And that is beautiful. Your subconscious message, when it comes to the moon, it starts, well, I guess it starts with this one, which is funny because I just picked up the moonology and I got a queen of the moon card. So we have two subconscious messages from the queen of the moon. It is beauty. And if you see right here, eyebrow, eye, nose, mouth, the outline of a face. I didn't see that <laughs> the first, the, well, the couple of times or the many times I had used these cards before. And one day I just looked at the cards and I was like, oh my gosh, it's a face. I always saw the lips, but I never saw the rest of it. And that's going to be what this time is like for you. That's what Luna is saying. You'll, you'll see a part of it. You'll see a part of the beauty set before you, but you won't see all of it. And then you start to see more and more. And then one day you're like, oh my gosh, that was the picture. That's what I was putting together. And it leads you to abundance. It leads you to prosperity. It leads you to a blessing. And it's a blessing you've been waiting for. Your subconscious moonology message is your commitment is being tested. Your commitment to your dreams, your commitment to your passion, your commitment to you is being tested. Look at it. Look at the tests that you are going through. And don't let doubt and fear win. Believe in yourself. Believe in your power. Believe in your truth. Believe in your authenticity. And let that belief move you forward. It leads you to your subconscious tarot message, which is the Six of Cups. You're going to be rather nostalgic. You're going to think the past was always better and the present will always be sweeter. The, or, no, the future will always be sweeter. The present needs to be enjoyed. The moments in your life, you need to start seeing them and Spirit is saying, start see the, seeing them as moments of transformation and a stepping into a new role of existence, of power, of beauty, of truth. Don't be looking backwards because you'll miss the beauty that is ahead of you and you'll miss the breathtakingness that becomes a part of you. All right, Pisces, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending nothing but loving, healing energy your way. I wish you nothing but light, love, and positivity. Let's end this reading. Yeah. And may you always stay well and safe. And I love you all. Let's end this reading 
with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we move forward, seeing that things that have always been one way start to change, seeing that we are stepping into an abundance we didn't think that we got to have. And as you claim your power, as you become a warrior of your truth, as you stand in your grace and your glory and be so authentically you that it is brilliant, stand so with pride within yourself, embracing your kingliness, putting that crown on your head and knowing what that crown is made of because it is going upon and around your crown chakra, right? So what are your thoughts about it? What are your fears and your desires, the beauties and the truths that you have? And how do you move forward to be that king, to be that ruler that divinity sees you as? So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces. And may you have a blessed moon.